Okay, now we're going to look at using the law of cosines. Um, these are the two situations where um, you can use them, where you know two sides and the angle that's between them, or if you know three of the sides. But basically, if you cannot use law of sines, then you're going to use law of cosines. And remember, to use law of sines, you have to know an opposite angle and side pair. So like if I was given this angle and I was given this side, there's an opposite angle and side pair. And so that means if I was given this angle, I could find this side. So, or if I was given that side, I could find that angle. Where you have to be careful about thinking you can't use the law of sines and you really can, is when you're given a situation like this, you would think, oh, well, there's, I don't know that angle, so I don't know that opposite side. I don't know um, this opposite angle inside because I don't know that side, and I don't know this one because I don't know that side. Well, really, you do know this angle. If you know two angles, you know the third one because you know they add up to be 180. So 70 and 80 add up to be 150. This one has to be 30 degrees, and there's your opposite angle inside pair. So that's the only situation you really have to look out for, um, thinking that you don't can't use law of signs, but you really can. So if you can use law of signs, use it. If you can't, use law of cosines. So we just got through um, discovering the law of cosines, which may seem a little intimidating when you first look at these um, formulas, but I want to kind of break it down and let you see how really easy this is to memorize and use. So there's three different forms. Um, just like with law of sines, we had three ratios, but we would only use two of them at a time. So there's really three different equations we could form with those as well. If you're going to solve for side A or angle A, you want the A's to be on the outside of the formula. If you're solving for side B or angle B, you would use this one. Side C or angle C, you would use this one. They all follow the same pattern. And so I'm going to separate the formula right here at this point so we can focus on this part of the, the formula. So notice whatever side is squared over here, on the other side, you're going to have the sum of the square of the other two. So since this was a squared, we have the sum of b squared and c squared here. Since this was b squared, we have the sum of a squared and c squared, and so on. So this should remind you of Pythagorean theorem, which really, this one is exactly Pythagorean theorem. These are not Pythagorean theorem, but at least it follows the same pattern. Whatever squared here, you have the sum of the square of the other two here. The next part is you're always going to have minus 2, and then you're going to have two sides multiplied together here. The two sides that are multiplied are the same two that you used right here. So B and C were here, you're going to multiply B times C here. A and C here, A and C here. A and B here, A and B here. And then you're going to take the cosine of the angle that matches with the side that's over here. So cosine of A here, because we had A on the left side over here. So B and B, C and C. So once you kind of um, break it up into those parts, you can see the pattern. It's really not that intimidating. So let's look at using the law of cosines. The very first problem, we're going to be finding a side length. It says find AB, but AB is the side across from angle C. So we know that we can just call that side C. So we're going to be using the formula where the C's are on the outside. So let's practice writing that. So since we want C squared on the left side, remember I want the sum of the square of the other two sides here. So A squared plus B squared. And then I want minus 2 times these two sides. So A, B. And then I want the cosine of the angle that matches with the side that's over here. So cosine of angle C. Remember, lowercase letters for your sides, uppercase for your angle. So this is the formula we're going to use. Since we're solving for side C, we should have numbers that go in for these variables in the formula. So we're going to keep C squared here. I'm going to replace A with 29, so that would be 29 squared plus B is 42, so plus 42 squared, minus 2 times A, which is 29, times B, which is 42, and then cosine of angle C, which is 65. Now that looks like a, a really um, big mess there with a bunch of numbers, but we know to solve for C, we just need to undo the squaring of it. And what undoes the squaring? Well, square root does. So if we take the square root of this side to get C by itself, 
I need to keep it balanced by taking the square root of this whole side. Now thank goodness we don't have to do that in our head, but our calculator can do that all in one step. Since we're going to be entering a trig function, make sure that you're in degree mode. So you're going to go to your mode, and if radian is highlighted, scroll down and right to degree and press enter. And then second mode will get you out of that. So I'm going to put in the square root symbol by second x squared, and I'm going to type all this in at one time. So 29 squared plus 42 squared minus 2, don't put negative. Um, anytime you have something in front of it, you're going to put a subtraction, not a negative. I'm going to put the 29 and the 42 whoops, in parentheses for that multiplication. And then cosine, it opens parentheses for the 65. Really doesn't matter if you close it since you don't have anything after that, but I always do anyway. So we just want to double check that we entered everything correctly. And then we're going to be rounding to the nearest tenth. So C is approximately 39 0.7. Since we don't have units, I'm just going to put units there. So we have solved for a side length. It's just putting in all the information and you can put it in your calculator all in one step. And remember we could not use law of sines because we did not know an opposite angle and side pair. So that's why we used law of cosines. Let's look at our second example. This is where we're finding an angle measure. It doesn't tell us which one, but since we were using the C's last time, I'm going to go with A's this time, just for something different. So we're going to find the measure of angle A. That's what we're looking for. So since I want one of the A values, I'm going to use the form where the A's are on the outside. So again, let's practice writing that. So I want little a squared for side A squared. And I'm going to set that equal to the other two sides squared and added together. So B squared plus C squared minus 2 times those multiplied together, BC, and then the cosine of the angle that goes along with that side, so cosine of capital A. So hopefully that pattern you're seeing and saying, okay, this is not so bad now. We're solving for angle A, which means I should have numbers that go in for the sides, which I do. I know all three sides. So A is going to be replaced with 23, B with 18, C with 35. So I'm going to have minus 2 times the 18 and the 35 times the cosine of angle A. So I do only have one variable left. This one's not quite as easy as solving for a side. I can't put this all in my calculator at one time. It's just going to be too difficult with parentheses and order of operations. So I'm going to break this up into three parts. I'm going to go ahead and find 23 squared in my calculator. Then I'm going to do 18 squared plus 35 squared in my calculator, and I'm going to multiply 2 times 18 times 35. It's just going to make this um, equation a lot simpler. So I'm going to start with 23 squared is 529. 18 squared plus 35 squared is 1,549. Minus 2 times 18 times 35 is 1,260. So I have at this point 529 equals 1,549 minus 1,260 cosine of A. Now I want to eventually get solve for A, but first I'm going to isolate cosine of A, which means I need to get rid of the number in front of it, but that would be undoing multiplication. I also want to un get rid of this number. And so remember, we save undoing multiplication for last, so I'm going to get rid of this number first. Now, even though this is subtraction, I'm not going to use addition, because if I add 1,549, I'm not going to get rid of a 1,549. I need to subtract it from both sides on the equation. Now, of course, I'm going to get a negative here. That's not a problem, though, and you'll see why in just a minute. So we get negative 1,020. And now we have negative 1,260 cosine of A. I'm almost to getting um, cosine of A isolated. The problem is it has a number in front. A lot of students want to add that away, but remember addition undoes subtraction, and this is not subtraction. This is multiplication. So we're going to undo it using division. So I'm going to divide by one, negative 1,260 on both sides. Now, I'm not going to put this division in my calculator, because if I do, I'm going to get a pretty nasty decimal, and there's just no need in working with that decimal yet. 
Remember, I want to find the measure of angle A. Well, right now, on this side, I have cosine of A. Well, we know to get rid of cosine, we have to undo that operation using its inverse operation, which is the inverse cosine. So anytime you're solving for an angle, you use inverse trig. And whatever we do to this side, of course, we have to do to this side. So we're going to be ending up taking the inverse cosine of negative 1,020 divided by negative 1,260. So I just leave that as a fraction. I don't get that as a decimal um, because I'd have to round it, and I only want to round one time. So this will give me the measure of angle A when I put this in my calculator. So I'm going to put second cosine for inverse cosine. And I'm going to put negative 1,020 divided by negative 1,260. Whoops, I forgot my negative there. This is why it didn't matter that we got a negative, because now we're dividing a negative by a negative and going to get a positive. So we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So this is where you have to be careful. Now, rounding to the nearest tenth, this nine, the five rounds up to a ten, which pushes a one over here and makes that 36. But remember, you don't just put 36 when you round to the nearest tenth. It's 36.0. You would only put 36 if it was exactly 36 degrees, but it's not. And remember, this is an angle, so you're going to put the degree symbol. So the measure of angle A is approximately 36.0 degrees. So this one's definitely the most difficult when you're solving for an angle, because when you're solving for a side, once you have it set up, you can put it all in, one ca in the calculator in one step. But remember, when you're solving for an angle, separate it into these three parts, and then you can get rid of this number with either addition or subtraction. It's always going to be subtraction because that's going to be positive, of course. So you're going to subtract that number away, and then you're going to undo this multiplication with division. Remember to keep that as a fraction, and then you'll take the inverse cosine, because this is the law of cosine, so of course you're always going to have cosine here. So inverse cosine of that fraction and that'll give you your angle measure. All right, so you're going to be doing the evens only of worksheet 22. Remember, if you will not, if you will not be here tomorrow, um, make sure that you go ahead and get worksheet 23. I tried to give that to as many people as I could see um, last week, but if you did not get one, get one today and have that completed with worksheet 22 as well, the evens, and turn that in on Wednesday. Make sure you're studying your formulas and whatever you missed on your test so you're ready to do your retest on Wednesday. All right, see you later.